Nothing's working. I'm at my grandma's house with all my stuff, not with any direction. Really just felt like a rock bottom moment. Every day felt terrible. I had no plan B, so there wasn't really anything else I could fall back on. So I just kept going. Kelly Wakasa is a New York City vlogger who lives life by one mantra, do what excites. Today, he shares why that message saved his life, how he started in LA with no money, the meaning of his relationship with your mom, Ashley, and how ignoring convention has built him an audience of millions. My name's Eric. I'm co-founder of Carrot. We help creators like Kelly with their finances. And join us now for 36 questions to fall in love with Kelly Wakasa. I'm here with the one and only Kelly Wakasa. He started off firing shots. He said New York creator scene growing and thriving, and there's a reason why he left LA. Why the hate? What's going on? <laughs> I'm Straight exposing the you. Oh, a hundred percent. First of all, thanks for having me, Eric. Oh, thank you. Now tell me why you left LA. Wow. Okay. Um, We're going in hard. I just like moving. First of all, I had an opportunity to go to college in Arizona because I got into University of Arizona in Tucson and I saw an opportunity for making college content as a creator, but not actually going to college. So that was like my initial idea in game plan. So you weren't going for education edification. You were going to go for views. I guess so. <laughs> Dude, Kelly, we're, it's like five <laughs> seconds in and we're, we're exposing Kelly hard right oh! now. That's fine. Okay. So you thought, Hey, I can go to Arizona school for the content and what ended up happening instead? Went to Arizona, put out like weekly videos. And I feel like I started building my fan base, like very much so into a more sustainable career while in school and doing online classes that I kind of barely did. What then took you, you're in Arizona, I'm asking why New York City instead of LA? Well, I had an opportunity from some of my friends that are like, oh, let's move to New York. And I actually was not about New York at the time. So I went kind of on a whim, just like, okay, well, I'll just see. It's like only a year or whatever. And then I ended up loving it. So you actually, I didn't realize this, when I met you, you were deciding between LA and New York City. Yep. You had just graduated. No, no, no I didn't ever graduated. You never graduated, no, no, but yeah. you were coming from school in Arizona. Yeah. And you were deciding. I was deciding like if I wanted to stay either in school tech, like, wow. or just like in the area to film videos or go to New York. When this, was that? That was a long time this ago. This was like a 2020, 2021. Poker night. I didn't realize you were a college dropout. Are you too or no? No, I'm I was envious. about to fist bump you, but I guess I won't. Oh, wow. Damn. <laughs> Rejected. I think these days- It's not cool to be a college dropout. No, it's super cool to be a college no, dropout. No, 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 no. Because look, this means you took an extraordinary action. That's what you have to do to get to an extraordinary outcome. If you went to school, you would have been like every other mother like me who ended up getting a job in tech or corporate or law. But you're doing pretty good. Hey, man, it took me a long time. And I think you chose to do something super different drop out of school, keep doing the content, and in a world where many people would have just ended up in LA, you did a different path. I mean, that's, I'm flattered, but yeah. I just don't want to glorify dropping out. Like, I just think it's like not cool. You know what's so funny? I feel like I literally graduated. I graduated Harvard. Oh, you don't need to name drop Harvard no, but on I'm, me. The like, reason why I'm name dropping it is to be like, and I actually don't know if it was worth it. I actually think dropping um, out is a bad option. And you're the one who dropped out and you're saying, hmm, maybe... Kids, you should stay in school. I just think it's a fun experience if you can't yeah. like afford it or it's like, you know, worth it or worth your time and energy. So you said even when you were thinking about going to school in the first place, partially you were already thinking of the opportunities for content. Well, to give you more backstory, yeah. I didn't go to college after two years of high school. Like two years after high school, I'd still was just like on my gap year, I guess. Yeah. And so the only reason I went to college was because I was like, oh, there's this like niche. And I was always looking for a niche as a lifestyle creator. Like what videos do I want to make? Because I just want to make videos. And I'd always wanted to go to college, but I just didn't really actually want to do the schoolwork. So I was like, I guess I'll just take an L on the first, you know, semester of money and then kind of go for it. How long have you been creating content for a period? Because like even before college, it sounds like you were doing lifestyle stuff. Yeah, I would say like a decade. Like my first YouTube video is from 2009. So I was nine, but I mean, I'm not taking it that serious at nine. I'm not Mr. Beast at nine, you know? So I would say like maybe around 14, 15 is when I really started like putting out like weekly videos. I know originally you used to work with Braille and yep. you did skateboarding videos. 
Was this with Braille or you were just making your own videos yourself? Both. Like I was making my own until I think I was like 15 and then I started interning for Braille. At that point in time, did you envision a world where you'd be a full-time content creator? Was this always the dream, the passion, Kelly? This was the dream and the passion. So this man, this man, he is living his dreams. You are doing it live. No, I, I mean like I'm so grateful and like flattered to be here like even just like on the this podcast like you asked me to be on a podcast like this is like incredible to me that blows my mind i'm honored that you're here for those of you who don't know who <laughs> kelly is this man is i feel one of the most artistic youtubers today he's in town because he's been nominated for streamings in the editing category and i think he's found a really good balance between the artistry and the algorithm because not only are his videos really well cut, they get a lot of views. And you've <laughs> built millions of subscribers and a business that extends to the clothing you're even wearing right now. True. And so like, I asked you on this podcast because one, I wanted to get to know you better as a friend, but two, you're a creator who in my external perception has found a way to balance the artistic and the business. Wow. Yeah, well, that's why I was like, how do you get into this, right? Is the secret sauce because you went to New York City instead of LA because you dropped out of school? You've been cooking con for 10 years. Yeah, your particular flavor of how you do a little bit of both. Dude, I can't believe you just did it off the head, dude. That monologue was fire. Well, dude, it's easy. That was good, man. No, man, I'm reading out literally why I want to get on a pod with you. And so that's why I'm asking, like, when you were even 15, you already knew you wanted to be a creator. Which yep. is like a new thing because YouTube hasn't even been around for that long. YouTube was new yeah. back when you were starting to make content. I mean, nowadays, everyone can be a creator. Back then, it was kind of like kind of more of a shot in the dark. I mean, there were people that I could look up to and kind of see like what they're doing. But it was kind of still like, I don't know how much money you can make. Like, I just wanted to do it. And as a 15-year-old, like you're interning. Yep. Were you spending time on school, like other personal parts of your life, like friends, girls, or were you already just on that content grind? <laughs> Sorry, the content grind like makes yeah, me man. laugh. But I mean, I, I wasn't really thinking about, you know, balance. I was just having fun. So I would make videos. I would work for Braille. I would hang out with friends. I would go skateboard. I would hang out with my family and I would do school and I, I could kind of balance all of it. I could, I mean, I was never like a most phenomenal student, but I was like A or B student, like pretty much throughout high school. When did you begin to see the potential for, hey, I should like do this full time? While I was in high school, I was making AdSense money and I was making enough that I was like, and I was saving enough that by the time I was done, I was like, I want to move to LA. Like that's where I want to go. Cause I was, uh, I was raised in the Bay area and I told my, my roommate now, Luke, who had like less subs. And I, I told him like, you don't need to go to community college. Come with me to LA. Let's do this. And freshman year of high school, we actually told each other, told each other, like we should, we should become YouTubers and move to LA. Wow. And then after high school we did, but then we didn't become YouTubers because we weren't making that much money, but it was still fun. So you were making enough and I swear you're like, okay, this could be a thing. Yep. You got Luke like, Hey man, this is our moment. <laughs> Let's move to LA. And like, shit. We don't make enough money. Yeah, I actually was making more money in high school than once I was like a full-time creator. Wait, why? What happened? Because I, I could make the video. I had more video ideas because I was in school. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just make a school vlog or I'll do this. Like I kind of just felt like the content was coming to me versus like I was seeking it. But I think it was also a good learning experience to be out in the real world and be like, oh my gosh, like I actually have to really use my creative juices rather than like what's around me or I guess. Wow, so you're in high school. It's an environment where there's tons of things to talk about, tons of things people want to watch. When you're out living in your own, living on your own with Luke in LA, like what were like the sorts of videos that you'd make? So random. Like literally, I, one video that's like private right now is like eating a sand sandwich. I just like went to the beach and I thought like, oh, this is such a funny idea, right? Taking two pieces of bread, put it like take the Santa Monica sand, boom, eat it. Like, that's how bad the content was. I, I wouldn't know, be I, sitting here if I, I kept got, doing I that. I want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it up on the screen the later. Sand <laughs> sandwich. I always thought of, like, creativity, right? Sometimes it's easier when there's constraints around it. Like, if you just yep. put someone and you gave them, like, hey, you can sit around and do whatever you want. At least I know for myself, I'm usually not that productive. But weirdly, when I have a constraint, like, hey, 
I want to shoot a pod with you. I have like X time. Like you were here this day. Like we are going to do it. It forces me Mm -hmm. to come up with concepts of what I think can work. Like, oh, let's like set up the CRT so we can play your videos in the background. Here's a couple ideas of what we can do together. And I'm imagining like in a weird way, you being in LA, it's almost like you've gone from this extremely regimented environment, high school to literally everything. And then your creativity is almost like too many options. Sand sandwich, here we come. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, totally. I mean, at home, I also felt like, in a sense, like if I'm looking back, I never thought of it at the time, but it's like, well, I really had like a little bit of a, you know, a cast in a sense. I, my friends are all there. My family's there. Like people I would film with, things to do just happen versus then I moved to LA and then I only have Luke, which is all, I mean, no shade to Luke, like still fire, but like just not enough, you know, it was kind of like, oh, I need, need a little bit more. Like I need to learn now how to build kind of like my tribe in a mm. sense. Yeah, I've noticed like your content today, so much is centered around your life Mm -hmm. and your life is filled with friends. And so I picture in LA, kind of still based on your life, but you don't have many friends. I don't. It's really hard. Super hard. That's why I was making more videos and like money, I guess, in high school. And even that initial spark of inspiration that got you to make videos in high school, that got you to work with Brett, like where did this come from? Like to create something and put yourself in front of the world. Like, man, that is hard. It takes effort and yeah. you got to be vulnerable. You remember the first video you ever made? Like what was the thinking behind it? I think like the origin of like this drive to even create is from like where I land in my family. So like I'm the third boy out of four and then my two older brothers, whatever they did, I just like wanted to do that better. And so they made videos like, very randomly and I was like I want to do that so like literally the first videos I did were just copying theirs or trying to be better than them for some reason and then from there I was like just kind of fell in love with it and then I just kind of kept wanting to like I just want to beat my brothers they know this to this day too it's like I just want to beat them and they're just like they're good at what they do too they're super athletic like they're good students all my siblings have gone d1 soccer so it's like you know like if I don't make YouTube work and I quit on my soccer, which was like my family's like bread and butter, then I'm really the black sheep. You know, then I'm really the outcast. So I had to at least try hard. Honestly, that is terrifying, completely understandable. I feel people forget like to be excellent, you have to have a little bit of a, oh my God, if I'm not excellent, bad things are going to happen. I think so many of us have that younger growing up. And then later on, we figure out how to manage that scary impulse, right? And become more secure adults. But like, yeah, I mean, my version of that was like, you know, Asian. So it was soccer. (laughs) It was just like good grades, but it was like, if I didn't get good grades, it'd be like, Oh, like I suck. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I honestly couldn't imagine like, uh, growing up kind of with that, that pressure too is so like constant with the tests. And I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I'm sympathizing. No, I appreciate that a lot. And I mean, the one thing I lucked out on was I was the older brother. Okay. So in some ways, I didn't at least have someone who was constantly being compared to me. Gotcha. You had two older brothers. Yeah. And you said soccer was like your family's bread and butter. Religion. Like, Religion. I, I mean, like, I mean, I'm just saying it's like, re- like, like it really the important yeah. thing. Like, so no, like school didn't matter. Soccer mattered. I mean, school mattered too. But like, they were like, you're going to get into school because of soccer. So wait. football too. Football. Okay. Because I you know people always, you know, like. But you got to say football too. Okay. You know, for international viewers, Kelly's being very open You're welcome. to consider it football. Your parents, were they really into soccer slash football? Yeah. Uh, my mom played college. My dad didn't, but I think my mom just like wanted us to play. And then I think after my oldest brother went to school for soccer and then my second oldest, like it's kind of like you just keep going and that's, that's like what they love to do. They love to go to the games. It's even if it's across the country, like they just want to go and support. And like, that's just kind of what bonded our family. You mentioned as a 15 year old, you described making videos of your own. You started working with Braille. You actually didn't talk about soccer. So like, was it also a big part of your life for you the same way it was for your siblings? Yeah. So I was, I played like very competitive soccer until I was a senior in high school. So I was balancing all of this Wow. And going to practice, I don't know, four times a week plus games or something. And at what point did you decide to focus more on content instead? It was really tough. Like, I can go into detail, but, like, my mom loves soccer, and she thought I was 
a good player that like you can't just waste talent. And so like I tried to quit playing soccer for two years before I was able to like stop because my mom was like, no, you have to like keep playing. She wasn't like that forceful, (laughs) but just like, hey, if you're going to make this decision, you have to show me kind of in a sense that like this is worth it. And so I think that's also another driving factor of, hey, like I have to I have to prove myself that YouTube and at the time skateboarding was going to like turn into something or I'm just like literally wasting my time and threw away like my entire future because that's what it looked like kind of to like my mom at the time. She's like, hey, you could be really good at this and you're telling me you want to like do YouTube and And skateboard instead. Yeah, yeah. The skating was always like, you're going to turn out to be a thug. Don't hang out with the skate park kids, you know? Oh Which is gosh. like, honestly, the stereotype, like sometimes is true. Like the skate park does like bring on some like interesting yeah, people. Yeah, your mom's looking out for you. Yeah. She cares for you. And so I don't want to disappoint my parents. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming you probably didn't want to either, but you also couldn't give up on what you felt like you wanted to do. And so you're in LA, you've like gone through this emotional battle with your mom to get the right to make videos. Yep. You don't have as much inspiration as you did in high school you're with luke random video ideas what happens next i just knew that i wanted it really badly and that i had no plan b so there wasn't really anything else i could fall back on so i just kept going i feel like that's like when people always ask me it's like i just tell them you know if they want to be a creator you just keep going and there were some dog days i mean that's where LA, I actually, when I come back here, I get literally like PTSD and I get like some sort of anxiety, I swear, because at the time I was like really, really lonely here. That was during like the, you know, the creative process of trying to find out what to create, even though I wanted it so badly. And the process was just not easy. Like, I mean, I'm sure it's the same with you. Like you were just telling me before how I'm not trying to put you on blast, but like, yeah, you know, you start this podcast when you're in like a dark time. Yeah, it's going through a breakup. And I honestly think these dark times really what pushes us to, you know, create something new. And it's it's beautiful, but in the time you're in the dark spot, it sucks. sucks. When I hear you say like coming back to LA, like you feel that anxiety because everything you're trying to make, you hadn't yet like figured out what's your perspective, yeah. your POV. Like you just kept making content though. You kept being consistent. When did you feel like you started to have a sense? Like today, if I asked you to describe to me, like, what's your channel about? What is the work that Kelly Wakasa creates and shows to the world? How would you describe it? I mean, I would say do what excites, mm. but that's also like super broad. If someone asked me that, I would say adventure based content with storytelling. Mm. That is like, I mean, that also is broad, but there was a turning point in my content that I was like, Someone told me, actually, my first ever manager, which sounds glamorous, but it was like nothing, just like a friend pretty much. And I showed him a video that we had been working on for a while, Luke and I, and he was just like, it's terrible. There's no story. And then I was like, I'm not doing it. I don't need to tell a story. Like, that's that's lame. Like You want me to like talk and like something like that? But then that actually pushed me to, okay, like I can tell a story, dude. And so that's kind of what sparked me even doing like a narration. Mm. And so from that point in like 2019, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to be the best storyteller I can be because it seems to be the bread and butter of YouTube. Do you remember what was the first narrated story video you did after that discussion with your manager? I go back and do a date with my middle school crush. And so that video also is like, I I remember thinking like, this is a great idea in general, Uh, had a bunch of narration, had a bunch of story and was like, I mean, I just look back and like the editing was really good. I don't even know what I would change. Yeah, it's something unlike Sand Sandwich, you look back (laughs) on this piece with pride. Yeah, yeah. What was the story behind it? Well, I had a middle school crush, never said it. I said it, I DM'd this person and then we kind of, you know, kind of fulfilled that, that itch at the time. Like, you know, even though I think maybe sometimes I give off like really extroverted vibes. uh, I mean, you know, everyone has their things that they don't want to do are too, like too uncomfortable. And I wouldn't say like 
for a long time, I wasn't that comfortable maybe with, you know, girls or whatever. Cause I, I didn't have like a relationship, uh, until after high school. Technically I'm like really in my first relationship, but yeah, I would say like that was it. Yeah. It's like someone you had a crush on that you never really pursued as someone <laughs> like, Hey man, I identify with you on that. Like I didn't date at all in high school. Like, dude, I was terrified of girls <laughs> And if you said like, hey man, like just shoot a video where you go back and ask out your middle school crush, I'd be like, yeah, like I didn't want to do YouTube. Like this isn't important, but like you, you went for it. And it's like this combination of like vulnerability, something I think every one of us has thought of. I like someone, but I'm scared to tell them. Yeah. And I missed my shot, but now I'm going to go back and tell them. Yeah. I had a good like time in my life and I, there's still many videos I come out with that are really just doing the childhood things that I never got to. Like I never went to prom. So then I, I threw a prom because I was like, why do I have to live with this kind of regret? Like, I don't have to, like, why can't I just create it for myself? Which actually really helped me realize that like, you can create any life you want. And it's like really just a game. Part of that for you is like, well, why don't I do the things now that I always wanted to do anyways? Why did you miss out these things in your childhood? Like you mentioned, you didn't go to prom. You didn't feel comfortable around girls. I think I just wasn't as much as of a go-getter in, in certain aspects that I didn't think at the time that I would care about until it was already over. Mm. Like I kind of just let, you know, things happen. The same with prom. I kind of just let it go by without asking someone, even though like I knew I had it in me, but I just still didn't, mm. which is crazy to look back on because nowadays I would definitely do it. Yeah. But you know, you kind of needed those moments, I think to really build your character. I feel like I also understand more, do what excites a bit mm -hmm. because it's almost antithesis to Kelly from high school where you're like, I could have asked someone to prom, but I just like didn't. Yeah. And now you're like, life is a game. Why not live a life with adventure yeah. and fun and choose to do these sorts of things? Something that really helped me, even just with like little things I would get nervous about, I'd be like, I'm excited. Like if you mm -hmm. can kind of just change it that you're excited, it may, it makes it feel better. Like you're, you know, instead of the world happening to you, you're, you're like happening to the world and you're like going out there in that, like even this podcast, maybe back in the day I wouldn't do just cause I'd be like, oh, I'm kind of nervous or like, I don't know, like, am I good enough? But now it's just do what excites. Like I have to embody it because I push it too. Wow. It's like you mentioned, instead of letting life happen to you, you happen to life. It's about taking a conscious choice. Yeah. It's like, Hey, maybe I feel anxious about doing this podcast, but do what excites I will choose to do it because doing it is more exciting than not, even though it is scary. This is not just a motto that you use for your channel and your merch. It's become a driving motivator for your life because now it's become the kickstart that gets you into things where once upon a time you might've relied on others. What's the origin behind this whole mentality? Like where did this come from? Back in LA, when I moved out, I was out here for about two years. And at the end of my second lease, I was staying at my grandma's house because we couldn't find a place. And this was like right before COVID actually. And I was just like, nothing's working. I'm making no money off YouTube, not enough to really survive. I'm at my grandma's house with all my stuff, not with any direction. And I felt like I had been out in LA for about two years and I had made no connections. And so it really just felt like a rock bottom moment of, man, this is like, might not work out. And that was the, I would say the closest time I was to being like, like depressed because every day felt terrible, like for a good, like two months. And that's when I wrote down in my journal out of pure desperation, what, like, what's my favorite emotion? I'm sure that wasn't the first thing I wrote down, but like eventually I was just writing whatever I could get out of me. And then I was like, ah, oh, happiness, oh, like, I was like, excitement. I was like, that's the thing that I would love to live in. If I could live in excitement, like I, I felt like my life would be happy. And so from there, I don't remember if I wrote it down that day, but then I came up with do what excites. Yeah, the mentality, the emotion, you figure yeah. it out. You wanted more excitement. Yep. It's one thing to have that moment where you're like, life is shit right now yeah, and yeah. what I need to orient myself more is excitement. It's another to like put that into practice. So 
when you began realizing you wanted more excitement in your life, like what changes did you start to make or what began to happen differently? I think that the things that I wouldn't do, like a risk, like just even on a video or something like that, or why not walk down the street and then just do a cartwheel? Like, why can't I? And so probably during that time, I was just doing more wacky things, more like uncomfy things. And like, it just really started building like these stepping stones into like becoming a more like solid person. I think that's why I push it kind of hard to just my audience is that it really did help me. Yeah. And every video I come up with now is, it's a lot easier to come up with because I just think, Oh, is, is the video doing what excites? When you look at your channel now, what's the next step? What's the vision? What's the dream? Do you want to keep doing what you're doing or how do you see it potentially evolving and growing? My dream from the beginning was always having enough money to bring my friends on adventures and, or just make videos while traveling. And Sometimes I'm able to do that. Sometimes I'm not. And so I feel like in a pretty good spot where I'm just excited to make videos that like I truly want to make and that I feel when I'm looking inward and passionate about the video, then the person that watches it can feel that as well. And so, I mean, as a YouTuber, you go back and forth a lot of times, like I'll look back in certain videos and be like, ah, why did I do that video? Like it was cause I saw other people doing a similar video or something. And I never really, really like respect that video of my own. And so I'm just excited to do passion projects. I need to set up a way that I can get the videos out faster at this like level of quality, which means maybe outsourcing a little bit more or hiring more people because the editing does take a while. I kind of love too, because now we're shifting. We've spoken a lot in some ways of the artistry that fuels your videos, your yeah. personal story, wanting to create, having to fight for the right, going to LA, just failing, <laughs> yeah. not having ideas, deciding to change the way you live your life. Now we're talking a little bit more about how you've balanced this with the business part, Yeah, right? You're talking a bit about you have to make money if you want to take your friends on adventures. Yeah. You have to scale the channel if you want to get more videos and more money. I said in the very beginning, I love your channel because it balances the artistry and the business. Yeah. And so let's dive a little bit more into that piece. When did you start to think about what you do as a business? For example, you launched your merch line. Mm -hmm. Like what motivated that decision? I just wanted cool clothes. Yeah. I, at my core, am like the worst businessman. And it definitely took me learning from others and just being around others in the space that, hey, you can like make money and like you can go further because without money, like I, it's really hard for me to just make the videos at a higher clip or anything, you know, you know, any business, you need to outsource it a little bit to, in order to keep growing. So I feel like there was a moment for me where I hired my first employee and then that was like, oh my gosh, I have now all this extra time. And if I really wanted to, like I could have as much time as I want. Like I actually don't even need to spend any time on the videos if I wasn't as passionate, but like too bad I'm too passionate and picky that when I get a video back, Darn. I'm just like, okay, now I need to you edit care. it for a week. Yeah, which sucks. Yeah. I'm almost jealous of the creator that doesn't care about the videos, but are so business minded that they can just like show up, do their fun like activity and then just like whatever the edit looks like, it's fine. Why jealous? As much as I love the editing process, it can be tedious and like I am like oh when I get a when I get an edit or like whatever I work with my editor and we like you know are collaborating to make this video come to life as fast as possible pretty much it's like ah, like you know hours behind the, the screen like for days or weeks or however long it's like well I, I do like playing basketball like I do like just enjoying life too that would be fun and I know like you can kind of have that too if you just like don't really care as much. But you care more I care too much. about the quality of what you're putting out. Yeah. You've described business for you matters because it fuels the ability for you to keep being creative. Yeah. To keep putting more videos out, to keep taking your friends on adventures. You have a merch business, which makes you money, but also because you wanted clothes that were cool. Obviously, you've picked up a lot of these business things because you had to. Yeah. And you mentioned like, Let's just take a moment, right? You hire somebody. That means you have the ability to pay this person. Yeah. Compared to, you said when you were in LA, there were periods for two years, you weren't making money. 
Oh, no. You felt anxious. You felt alone. Like you were basically broke. Now you actually do make money. A little, yeah. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, enough to at least support your channel. When you were hiring your first employee, what helped you get to that point? Was it an easy decision that you knew you were going to get to? Or was it like, oh, I don't know, man, but I'm scared and I should just do this? I just paid him so little. It didn't really matter. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, in the beginning, it wasn't like a real Kelly job. Kelly Wakasa hot takes come out. <laughs> it wasn't like in the beginning, it was super like... Uh, Oh, can you help me film for an hour? Like, I'll pay you a little bit. You know, it's like, it's yeah. not, it's not actually a job. Um, but I just kind of took that risk and I was like, I'm just going to learn by doing like, I read enough books that I knew I had like a business mind like has to outsource or like, you know, you, in order to get bigger, you got to do with other people. Also, I love the Golden State Warriors and this will relate to it. I promise. And their mantra is strength in numbers mm. and that like they always do it together and that's how they're going to win, you know? the championships. If you were in a world where say you film the adventures that you have with your friends and you hand it over to your team for editing and you're not involved in any at all, but they just come back to you and it's exactly what you wanted for your vision. Is that a win or does it part of you feel like I need to be involved in that editing process? That would be such a win. No, like if it's yeah. exactly what I want, then of course that that's what I want. Yeah. But it's just like really hard to get there. And I think because I also don't love planning the video. I like to just, I mean, I plan it, but I like to just shoot it. Mm. And then I decide like, this is the where the story I want it to go. And I actually do think that better stories are told from not having as much plan. But like, it also sucks as a YouTuber not to plan it's a lot easier on your editor if you have a straight up plan a nice brief it's just like you're shooting exactly what you need super efficient but then you know you miss something you missed like oh when that glass fell off the table so that's why we'd be filming like so wow. many hours but then we never miss a moment but then we also like our timeline of like editing just takes that much longer it's like you're trying to capture all the footage of just everything that happens in your life and we construct the story later via editing. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, during the video shoot, but I feel like a lot of actually creators that I've talked to, like, they just like, no, oh, they, they know it. They script everything. They script out. everything. But I only have like an idea. Like, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to go to Turkey to shoot with the world's tallest man. I guess we'll just see what happens. But you have confidence. Like, I know I can edit a story out of this. That's interesting later. Because when I'm shooting it, it's also still great. But if you saw our raw footage... Like it's, it's gar it's kind of technically garbage. Like without the edit, it's nothing. In a way, you're not describing editing just for editing's sake. You're describing editing for the purposes of this is a story I want to tell. Here's how I have to edit to get here. Even you saying that, it's less th yeah. than you think. It's more so just a feeling. What does that mean, the feeling? <laughs> People always ask me about editing and like, oh, what are your strategies or whatever. It's like, there is no strategy. It's like a feeling. Yeah. It's like a... Uh, you know, like a, you know, creative expression of just like, you know, like a painter who just like starts with a blank canvas, really. You're just like, mm, why did I add that sound effect there? I just thought it was funny or I thought it was like it worked. So like I, I just thought like a lot of times people like to like formula, formalize it. I don't even know this word. But really, I think a lot of times when, when I'm on like editing it, I'm not like thinking about like strategies or retention. I'm just like, hmm, this would be really funny. Should I just get like a Snoop Dogg voice to put like say do what excites there that sure why not that's a, i feel today's era of youtube is so driven by retention and metrics and you're sitting here saying i actually edit according to just how i feel and yeah. it's working i also take you know i'm i'm still like an artist you know i yeah. take things that there's also a funny video to have up it's like a 45 minute <laughs> Oh, should we skip this video? <laughs> <laughs> There's a funny video to have um, up right now. It's funny because we're talking about editing and this is a 45 minute video <laughs> where there's no editing and you're just sitting into a camera and we're like, we're talking about like, yeah, I edit according to feeling as opposed to just 45 like minutes pretty much of a Kelly podcast. Sitting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still watch my video and I want it to be like compelling front to back. Like yeah. I don't say... Oh, I'm just going to make this clip so long and just so mm. because I want it, because I want it just to remember that because I still think about the viewer. Like, it's not all me. I still like want to show 
the video to a friend and be mm. like, wow, that was such a funny video or entertaining. So I don't want you to think that I don't edit f- for like no tricks and tips, like, but majority is not like, I don't really, that's not my base. I think mm. a lot of people have like a base of that. You mentioned so much of it for you is telling stories. What are the stories that you haven't told that you want to tell? I don't even think that far ahead. Mm. Because you're just living life and seeing what happens. I think when I think that far ahead, that's when I start becoming sad. What do you mean by that? Master Uguay said it the best, man. You know, yeah. what is it? Tomorrow's. Tomorrow uh, may never come, but like the present is a present. Something like that. No, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little cleaner than that, though. It's like, uh, t- tomorrow is a mystery. Yesterday is history, but today is a gift. And that is why they call it present. And then he like floats off, you know. That was really. He said good. it cooler. Also, you adopted just enough the voice that I recognize Master Ugwe, but not enough that you're gonna get canceled for an Asian accent. <laughs> That's what I was thinking in my head because I was like, I shouldn't actually go like 100 with that There's accent. There's like right? a really fine line there. Just as a side note. Okay, so I want to play a game with you. So how familiar are you with We're Not Really Strangers? I've never played. It's based off 36 questions to fall in love. The New York Times wrote an article about this. Where these questions designed around vulnerability and reciprocity. Strangers went through them together in pairs. And many of these pairs, while well, you're even taking off your hoodie. Dude, it's getting hot in here. We've got to get Ooh, to know each other. Feelings running strong. Many of these pairs of people who went through these questions became friends. And one pair even ended up falling in love and getting married. So there's three levels of questions. We're just going to pull a couple from each. Level one to level two to level three. All right. And it starts actually with eye contact. Well, after a countdown from three, two, one, I'm going to stare deeply into your eyes. I'm going to stare deeply in mine. And the first person to blink or look away, they're going to pull the first card. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. You have strong eyebrows. I was like, can we talk during oh, this? Oh, we can talk. You blinked. <laughs> did I blink? Did you I blink? Did I didn't feel like you I blinked. Did. You oh 100% blinked. All right, level one. Full level all one. Right, you 100% right. blinked. I was like, I'm so, like, during that moment of like eyes closed, like, I'm so going to win this. Oh, yeah, I know. You right. lost. So, okay. I'm just, yeah, just pull it. And level just one. Me. Level one, perception. What about me is most strange or unfamiliar to you? Dude, you live so in the moment and you're so feelings driven and I love it. Like, I admire. I am not that way. Like, my head is always worrying, thinking about the past, thinking about the future. I'm anxious a lot. And I just am so inspired how you obviously get sad and anxious. I was going to say, like, I still have those days. A hundred percent. Like, no, you literally said part of what inspired your current way of living was you being really sad and being like, life kind of yeah. sucks right now. You're human. And you also are choosing, though, to try and live a life that is focused on the moment. And always in that moment, making the choice that is more interesting and more exciting. And it's strange and unfamiliar to me because that's not how I live my life, but I like it. And now yeah. do what excites has a lot more deeper meaning for me because I know where it comes from with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like kind of like, have you always lived your life like that? Just like. Well, not until I discovered do what excites. Okay, that really. makes sense. So really it was <laughs> that, that was a moment where you're like, hey, I can now live life a different way. And that's the meaning. It's why I try and share that so much with other people. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's really like, you know, you, you know it too. Like your mind and, you know, manifesting and whatever is so important. Like if you yeah. believe in yourself, like it's really anything's possible. What about, uh, well. If I ask the question to you, what about me do you find most strange or most unfamiliar? Strange or unfamiliar yeah, I'll ask you. you the same thing. About I mean, me. you've been asking me questions this entire time. Yeah. And so like even me, like I wish that I could reverse and sh- sit there because I'm curious about you and like. What do you want to know? Yeah. Or what do you find to the prompt unfamiliar or strange about me? You seem like you're everywhere. Like you are, uh, you seem like you have such a motor for making content, making connections that I don't have. Like I don't have the like the desire to make a ton of connections or maybe I do, but I don't do it though. Mm. You know, and you have such a broad network of people that you constantly, you know, meet up with that it kind of fat, that really fascinates me. Like what drives you to like make so many connections even. I think for me, the number one thing I care most about in life is relationships. Mm -hmm. And 
because I've spent so much of my life without them. With my high school career, as I mentioned to you, it was all just spent studying and trying to get into college yeah. to really follow what my parents thought was right and what I internalized as right. In college, it was all just spent trying to grind and get a job in finance or consulting. And in finance and consulting, it was always trying to leave and do something different. I never really took the time to get to know people because I was so focused on there's a goal that I need to hit and mm -hmm. nothing else matters unless I hit that goal. The ironic thing then is sometimes you hit that goal and you're like, what was it all for? Yeah. Because I'm here and it sucks. Like I imagine for you, right? Hitting subscriber milestones, right? 1 million subscribers, 2 million subscribers. At a certain point, it's just numbers. Yeah. It's more just what's the day-to-day -day process of your life that actually affects your mood and feelings a lot more. Maybe it's because I've spent so long without relationships I care about that more than anything. The whole reason why I do care it is because I've realized the people I learn the most and admire from are the people who they've all gone through similar realizations like you. Yeah. One day you sit down and you're like, this is not the way I want to live my life and I have to change it. Mm -hmm. That's why you create and share. Creating is hard. And to do it, you have to make decisions about yourself and how you're going to live your life that I think me, myself, 10, 15 years ago, even five years ago, would have really needed to hear. And so for me, I'm like, the people I want to spend the time getting to know are the people who inspire me with how they live their lives. Like even just listening to you now, I'm mm -hmm. like, I really like it. And I want to do more of that also. And I've been able to do that. Carrot obviously is a business. Yeah. And that's my version of how do I think about the artistry of what I'm putting out versus the business that needs to generate enough money to support it, right? You said you have to make enough money from your videos so you can keep making them, so you keep inviting your friends. Yeah. I want Carrot to succeed because I think it's my way of getting to be a part of this world and building relationships with creators and helping them. That's how I balance cool, I'm building these relationships and I know it needs to feed back into the business, but I'm also doing this because it's my version of wanting to be able to relate and help and learn. We want the tribe. I think, you know, that's like so important that we both had to go through, you know, dark times to realize. Oh, this is a great question. Great question. <laughs> Let's, uh, now I'll pull a level one. All right. <clears throat> Do I look kind? Explain. <laughs> I love this is like phrased in the most not kind way possible. It's like I demand an explanation. Do I look kind? Um, of course I feel like, I mean, what am I supposed to say? Like you have kind eyes, or like, you know, like, I mean, you, you, you be like, like, I mean, not really. No, no. I, you're very approachable and Thank not you. like very scary to come up to I, even from the, you know, day one, you've also yeah. been just like very, you're very warm and fuzzy. Even when I well, walked in today, you're yeah, very really welcoming. You. I don't think of myself really inherently as a kind person. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. Right. Like I spent lot of time focused on outcomes and goals and not respecting people in relationships for what they are. I was thinking of what can I get out of this? Oh, that was the way okay, I used okay. to live my life. It's been a huge effort over the past five, 10 years to change that because I realized just how damaging and sad it is to live life that way. Yeah. And so now for me, it really is so much about, I treasure the chance that I get to build this relationship with you. Sure. Obviously we got to shoot content out of it, but even if like this gets no views, I get to have this moment with you and like that, that's something I get to feel happy about at the end of the day. And when I look back at this later on, I'll answer the same thing for you. The, the funny thing is, so you look kind, but like, okay. The first few times I met you, I was actually like kind of like intimidated. Really? Yeah. Can I, I'm going to be honest yeah, because you just seem really cool. I mean, I'm flattered. I No, guess. like actually, and I don't feel cool. So like the first oh, few times okay. I saw you, I'm just like, this guy just seems really cool. Like, I remember like, we put, we met like playing paintball, like your That's videos, right. like you do so many cool things with your friends, right? And of course, I never understood. There's like a lot of reasons why you live the way that you do. Like, I haven't seen the sand sandwich era of Kelly Wakasa, right? Yeah. I haven't seen you sitting across your mom crying. I mean, that's not mine. Her. I know, but it's a moment in your life, yeah. right? And now I feel like I know you so much more as a person. Yeah. And so I'm able to appreciate the kindness more versus, oh, like he's just really cool and I'm not. So like, I'm going to go vibe over here. It's really interesting. You know, yeah. I think 
even when we first met or kind of when I go to events, like, you know, we're going, I'm going the, the streamies. streamies, we're going to streamies or whatever. I, I still like always have this like small fish feeling and that like, even though you think maybe I look too cool or like you think I feel cool, I just really don't feel mm. like that. Like, you know, there's many moments when I'm, especially around like creators or something like, like there's insecurities with my content. Like I'm, like I'm insecure about my content what, what not you, being good enough. Really? What do you worry about that? And I don't, like, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't really worry about it too much, but yeah. it's not like I'm super, super like, like no worries when I'm just walking around like at a party with new creators that I've never met or like something like that. It's like, mm. I still kind of have that feeling. So like, I think even when we had paintball, yeah. like I'm a, sometimes a little bit more reserved mm. in a social setting, but then in di different settings, I'm like not reserved at all. I love it. No, I feel so, like I'm going to see so much of your goofy side, even just today. Yeah. Also, for what it's worth, like I earlier showed Tirzu. I was like, oh, hey, I have a friend coming by Kelly. So you need yeah. to talk to me after. Like, let me show you the video. I literally just picked a random video off your YouTube list, played like the first 15 seconds. He's like, oh, that's really cool. Like, because just the editing and storytelling alone, even in just like 15 seconds of just a random video <laughs> are enough and distinct enough to be like, oh, this guy's got like a POV. And like, it's interesting. You know what I mean? That you know, is really for, interesting. For, for what, like, I literally just like pulled it. He's like, he's like, wait, this, this is dope. Whoa. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe like, I honestly, I think, you know, we're, we're our worst critic, really. Yeah, that's true. And so even, even if you think I'm cool, like, I still think I'm like, I'm kind of like, I'm like mad corny. Or like, you know, I'm like, you know, those, you know, certain things that you just like think or, about or, yourself. Or maybe it's like the, I think to your point, it's like, you are corny, but that's not a bad thing. Of course. Who knows if your content is good or not, but it's clearly yours. Yeah. Yeah, it's very distinct. All right, let's do level two. Your turn. Let's do it. <clears throat> Gotta pick a good one. Describe your perfect day. Actually, it's one where I just get to wake up and I don't have a ton of business obligations and I just hang out with my friends. And honestly, like for me, podcasting, while it is also work related, is also my way of just like meeting new friends. And so like this, this is a pretty great day. Like I think I told you I got to hang out with Anpo earlier Yep. and then Tirzu and now you. And then I have another food creator. It's like her birthday later tonight. And I feel so honored that she invited me. She just, I've just gotten to know each other in the past year. I'm like, that feels like a pretty f***ing great day. That is a great day. Yeah. What about you? I don't know exactly the order, yeah. but I know like if I could fit everything into this day, like I know what I would do. Ooh, okay. Like some type of exercise. Nice. Like playing basketball, like yeah. literally like some pickups, some nice pickup where everyone just like not arguing. And then we just playing straight up some type of adventure, like if I could just be traveling all of a sudden with like some friends, that would be amazing. Oh, also to wake up with my girlfriend, that would be like amazing. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, those those three things are pretty solid. Or oh, oh my god, post a video. That would be a great yeah, rush. That's the combination. And then, and it does well. Let's go. Oh, it's getting better and better. <laughs> I also love. You know, you mentioned you said in many ways you said Ashley's like your first relationship. Pretty much, yeah. Was it? A matter of waiting for the right person or a matter of you changing as a person to be ready? I think I was ready. Mm. I was just looking for the right person. So I actually, I had a, I had a girlfriend before and okay. I had other like things or yeah, whatever. But clearly this one feels to you on a different level. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not even close. Wow. That's, can I ask who made the first move? I'm trying to think. Maybe you both just made first moves at the same time. I mean, we definitely were like feeling each other at the same time i would yeah. say i don't know what you classify as like the first move yeah. really of like romantic interest i just remember like a specific time when we like kind of you know like bump shoulders in yeah. like a cab and that was kind of like what is that is that her is that me like i don't know may i will i will maybe I'll, I'll probably say her bumping my shoulder but then i was like ready for that shoulder bump you know what i'm saying so you felt a spark of connection yeah, I mean, this, I mean, I already had that spark, like okay. kind of from like the one. shoulder bump is when you're like. Yeah, actually, I don't even know if she knows that. Wow, that's funny. I kind of love that. Now she can't see this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, delete the footage. Yeah. Do you feel? I feel like relationships are also like very rewarding, but also hard because in some ways, like before a relationship, like all we really know about love is like from our parents, mm -hmm. right? It's like how we grew up expecting to love and be loved. And I found like in my own relationships oftentimes I always end up dating someone who's like different from me in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. right? If I'm 
in that phase of my life feel a little more anxious about things, they might be a little bit more avoidant and calm or vice versa, right? Curious with you and Ashley, do you feel it's more of opposites attracting or more like, no, really similar, really alike vibes? I mean, we definitely have a lot of similarities, but we are very different too. Yeah. Like if I have a problem, I want to be alone. I think because I was on my own for so long, but when she has a problem, she wants to be like with me or like with someone to, you know, you know, whatever, work it, work her problem through. Yeah. And so there's a lot of different ways that we live our life that is very different. And even the way, like, I think we just look at YouTube, our work, or like work life, you know, maybe our, yeah, there's definitely just a lot of differences, but also we, you know, we have the same job, which is awesome. And then yeah. like, yeah, so a lot of similarities. For what it's worth, I'm the same as you. When I have issues, I'm like, I just need space. Yeah. Yeah. It was hard for her to understand too, like just saying, yeah. like, because why, why would you want to be alone when you're like going through something? But it's just kind of how I feel. I've, if anything, if I'm not let a, left alone, it escalates. Then yeah. I get yeah, I get more and more anxious, upset because I like can't even be alone. You can't kind of do the reflecting and you can't do the like yeah. process. Exactly. And I've dated people who very much need you there. And yeah. it is hard to like figure out how to balance those. It's yeah. not easy. Like I didn't know going into it that like it actually is work. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's work, but I mean, obviously it's not like work. No, I, I get it. It's, it's not a nine to five, but yeah, there is yeah, like yeah. some moments. No, you have to like, if a relationship is worth it, you're not literally the same people. You have to try and understand where each other's coming from. Yeah. You have to kind of make some type of compromise. All right. Let's do it. Let's, let's do level three. We'll do a couple level threes. Your turn. My turn. You know, I actually have a card game coming out. Really? Yeah. What's your card game about? It's called the Do It Excites Playbook. Okay. This makes sense. And it goes along with uh, a movie that I'm putting out. What the f***? You're but it's not, it's not like, it, pa pause. It's not okay. like a movie. It's like just a very, it's like a long YouTube video. It's in like an hour. Wow. Yeah. What's inspiring it? Yeah. It's just something I always wanted to do was grab all my friends and go on a road trip and make a movie out of it. Holy s***. So I just mic'd everybody up and I created, uh, you know, it's like a book of dares, but yeah. it's, a, it's a card game way. I kind of love even like the more in-depth, longer project is an extension of you having fun with friends. It's just like bigger yep. scope, more people, more things, longer. Yep. Very cool. Here's my question for you. What do you recommend I let go of, if anything? What about, maybe this? You see oh, this? The, rat, the, rat you the rat tail? Oh, I know it's rat tail. No, the rat tail. I can't, I can't let you go that man. No, no, you gotta, you gotta hold on. It actually, it gives me a Star Wars vibes. That's what someone said. Yeah, yeah. But it's just... Uh, mm, I don't know if let go of, but I just want to provide that awareness, right, where you said... Like you have these questions in your head, like, is your content good enough? And mm. I'm not saying let go of it because I actually yeah. think a desire to constantly improve in your craft, like it's valuable. Part of the reason and motivation why we actually get better. So I'm not saying let go of it, but also maybe add on the additional question, not just like, is it good enough? Maybe reframe it to like, am I, do I like this? Yeah. Right. Because I think, is it good enough? Almost implies there's like a good and there's a bad. And like other people can look at it and be like, this is good or like, this is bad versus, well, uh, it's your POV. It's your choice. And yeah. it's more you get to look back just like you're asking out your middle school crush. Do I like this video or not? I feel is another way to reframe that question. Maybe you don't, in which case try and meet your own expectations next time. Maybe you do. But I feel that in some ways is more important than this abstract concept like, is it good? Yeah. And what others would deem as good. I like There's that. so many different ways to be a creator. Yeah. I feel like there are certain times that I should be more of a, a fan of myself almost. Yeah. In a weird way, like... Yeah. Because, yeah, I, I I do sometimes, I'll complain to, like, my girlfriend, like, yeah. this video is or something, and she's like, no, it's not. And I'm like, but it is to me. It's like, you can say that, but it is. <laughs> yeah, so. Something that I would recommend you let go of. I think it's easier, to, it's harder to let go of this one, but it feels better to let go of, like, the past. Mm. Of certain things that I think, you know, like you were saying, living in the moment. Yeah. And I think you already do a good job about it because you're so busy that you can't, it's hard to dwell about, about the past. You, you know, you really only dwell when you're like by yourself for a long time. You have nothing period. to do. Yeah. So yeah. I don't like, also, I don't even know you well enough. That's why obviously we're doing this podcast. Yeah. But yeah, I would say like, based on what I've been hearing, like, yeah, you should just you know, live in the moment as much as you can and just like open that door to living in the moment. Because I know sometimes our minds are like, no, that's just not what I do. Like, yeah, but sometimes you just have to be open. Thanks, man. I love that. F yeah, dude, that was great. How do you feel? Great.